All right, so, so far we've seen two types of integrals so far, right? We've seen indefinite integrals, which solve a differential equation, right? So indefinite integral solves df of t equals little f of t, right? And we'd say, okay, the integral of little f of t, we call this the indefinite integral, which is equal to the antiderivative plus a constant, right? So it solves this differential equation here. So let me move this, there we go. Okay, so indefinite integrals are used to solve differential equations, right? And then the initial condition would be used to find that constant of integration. A definite integral, on the other hand, describes the total change in a function total change in f of t between t equals a and t equals b, right? And that's given by this definite integral, which looks the same as an indefinite integral, but it has these two bounds, a and b, on my like integration sign, this curly s, okay? And we saw that this is equal to, you know, the limit as n goes to infinity of a Riemann sum, either a left hand or a right hand Riemann sum, right? So it's the limit of those area under the curve approximations, okay? And the fundamental theorem of calculus is a way to link these two things. The fundamental theorem of calculus is going to allow us to use indefinite integrals to solve definite integral problems. So for definite integrals where this function little f of t has a nicely defined antiderivative that we know how to take, we'll be able to use this antiderivative to compute this definite integral with a lot less work than doing it with these Riemann sums. But the Riemann sums will always work in a case where we can't find the antiderivative. Right, so there's a balance here. Let's do an example to kind of illustrate where this link is coming from, right? So let's say we have a differential equation, dv dt equals t squared. And maybe this is like, uh, you know, rate of change of volume over time. Okay, so that's what this b is here. Okay, well, if we wanted to know how much uh, volume changes, by between times zero and time two, right? How much does the volume change by between these two times? Well, as we saw before, we could do method one where we integrate dv dt, right? Integrate that up, t squared dt gives us t cubed over three plus a constant, right? We'd call that my volume as a function of time, right? And then to find out how much the volume changes by between t equals zero and t equals two, I would say, let's take the volume at time two and subtract the volume at time zero. Okay, and then in this case, we'd get uh, two cubed over three plus c minus zero cubed over three plus c. And we'd get eight over three C's cancel and that's a zero. So the total volume changes by eight thirds. Okay. Between times two and time zero. Right? So for these, uh, you know, asking about total change between two points doesn't depend on the initial condition or the integration constant. Right? Because when we subtract them, those constants are gonna cancel. So it doesn't depend on the initial condition or constant of integration to do this sort of calculation, okay? Method two would be to compute this definite integral, zero to two of t squared dt, right? We would do this by taking a limit of the corresponding Riemann sum, right? 
throwing that into a computer or looking at the equation that comes out of here and seeing if we could take the limit of that. Okay, All right, but they give you the same answer. So the fundamental theorem of calculus would just say we can evaluate, let's make this in black, the fundamental theorem of calculus gives us a way to combine these two. Okay, the fundamental theorem of calculus says for a continuous function, f of t, and any indefinite integral, integral f of t dt equals some antiderivative, right? In this case, we don't even really need the constant of an integration. And we'll get to that in a second. But for any continuous function and any different integral that we can actually find the antiderivative for, the definite integral a to b of this function, f of t dt, is going to be this antiderivative at b minus the antiderivative at a, which we also write like this f of t with this line a to b, which says evaluate it at b and then subtract it evaluated at a. Okay, and this is exactly combining these two methods, right? So let's go back to our example, right? So this was dv dt equals t cubed, or sorry, t squared, right? And we saw, okay, we integrate this from zero to two, dv dt, right? This is zero to two of t squared dt. Fundamental theorem of calculus says plug in the antiderivative Right, so that would be t cubed over three from a to b, or from zero to two. So that means eight over three minus zero over three, which is eight over three, right? And you can see that this is exactly the same calculation as when we found the antiderivative as a function and then looked at how that function changed between the two times, right? So when we found this v of t by just calculating the antiderivative of that differential equation, right? And then we plugged in time two, plugged in time zero, and we got that the total change was eight thirds. It's the same thing here. We're just kind of skipping that step where we actually find the correct uh, solution to the differential equation, right? We don't need it because when we're looking for a total change, those constants of integration are gonna cancel out. So we don't even need to solve for them anymore, okay? When we have a definite integral with two bounds, okay? So let's do another example where hopefully this can be uh, more intuitive, right? So this example we've had a few times now, we're driving a car at constant speed. Five miles per hour, right? How far have we driven in two hours? Okay, well, we set up the differential equation, right? This is the derivative of our position is five, right? It's always just a constant speed of five. We wanna know how far we've traveled in two hours. That means we look at the integral from zero to two of this uh, speed, this change in position, right? So that's zero to two of five dt. By the fundamental theorem of calculus, this is five t, the antiderivative, evaluated at zero, and two and the difference of those evaluations. So this gives us five times two minus five times zero equals 10 miles, right? Which is exactly what we'd expect, right? We're driving at a constant speed of five for two hours. So we should just multiply the speed by the time to get the distance, okay? We can do another example where let's say we have a uh, fish length grows according to the equation dl dt equals 6.48 e to the minus 0.09 t. 
okay, where t is in years, right? So as the fish gets older, its uh, fish length will grow, all right? So how much does the fish grow by? between ages, let's say, two and five years. Okay, so we're looking for a total change between two time points, right? So we're looking for the definite integral from two to five of dl dt dt, right? So we're looking at the definite integral from two to five of 6.48 e to the minus 0 0.09 t, right? So we want to use the fundamental theorem of calculus here, right? To use FTT, we need to find the antiderivative or the indefinite integral, and then we'll plug in our bounds, right? So the indefinite integral is 6.48 e to the minus 0 0.09 t dt. We want to use whatever integration methods we know, right? So here, let's use a u sub, right? Let's let u equals negative 0 0.09 t, then du dt becomes negative 0 0.09, okay? Substitute these in, we get 6.48 divided by minus 0 0.09 du dt, e to the u dt, right? So then that tells us that the antiderivative, right, so this is equal to that, and that gives us 6.48 divided by 0 0.09 or minus 72. So this is an integration that we've done before, previous video where we learned about u subs, e to the u, right, or negative 72.0, e to the negative 0.09, T. Okay, so then let's use FTC on the original problem. Right, this definite integral. Right, now we know the antiderivative, it's sitting right here. Yeah, I guess we could do the plus C here. We can leave out that constant of integration though because it's going to show up in both sides of our difference. Right, so we have this definite integral. Right, so 2 to 5 of 6.48 e to the negative 0 0.09 t dt by the FTC, it's equal to this antiderivative e to the minus 0 0.09 t evaluated at 2 and 5 and the difference between these two. Okay, so if we plug in these numbers, we get minus 72 e to the minus 0 0.09 times 5 minus minus 72 e to the minus 0 0.09 times two, right? And again, I could include this plus C. Let's just include it. You don't have to do this, but you know, if you wanna be careful, there's technically a plus C here, go plus C here, and then it will show up here, right? If I keep this constant of integration, it'll show up on both sides of this difference and it'll disappear anyways. Okay, so then if I do this out, we get minus 45.9 plus 60.1. So that gives us 14.2 centimeters, All right? So length L in centimeters grows according to this equation where T's in years. Right, so how much does it grow by between ages two and five? We had to do this definite integral to find that it grew by 14.2 centimeters between those two years, okay? So you're not always looking for definite integral starting from zero. You could start from any start point and end point. And the fundamental theorem of calculus will work the same way each time, okay? We could also use this on problems where we need integration by parts, okay? And the fundamental theorem of calculus will work just the same way. Okay, so if we do integration by parts on an example like, let's find the amount of chemical 
chemical amount produced in a reaction. A reaction according to the differential equation dc dt equals t e to the minus t. Right, so some differential equation with this functional form. Right, so then how much uh, is produced between time zero and time two. And t equals two, right? So that's asking for us to take this definite integral of our differential equation. So zero to two dc dt dt, zero to two of t e to the minus t dt, right? To use FTC, we need to find this antiderivative or the indefinite integral. Okay, so we need uh, the antiderivative or the indefinite integral of t e to the minus t dt. Okay, well, a u substitution won't work here, but we could do integration by parts where u is equal to t dv dt is e to the minus t. And then in this case, uh, du dt becomes one and v of t is minus e to the minus t, right? Just by the chain rule here. So then uh, integration by parts says that this should be u times v minus integral of v du. Okay, so plugging in these numbers, that gives us t e to the minus t dt, or sorry, not numbers, but these functions is equal to minus t e to the minus t minus the integral of minus e to the minus t dt, okay? And then this is just gonna give us minus t e to the minus t minus, so then the antiderivative of minus e to the minus t. Uh, let's just make this a plus, so plus e to the minus t dt. So that way we don't get too confused. Let's do another u substitution here just to make this nice and precise. y will be minus t dy dt is minus one, right? So then that integral becomes plus the integral of minus y dy, sorry, minus e to the y times dy dt dt, which just gives us minus t e to the minus t minus e to the y plus c, or minus t e to the minus t minus e to the minus t. And it's hard to get all these minus signs done correctly. But anyways, we found that the indefinite integral of t to t times e to the minus t is equal to this by integration by parts, right? So then using FTC now, fundamental theorem of calculus, right? We have this uh, zero to two of t e to the minus t dt is now this function, we'll call it f of t from zero to two. Okay, so then that gives us minus two e to the minus two minus e to the minus two plus c minus zero e to the minus zero or zero e to the zero minus e to the minus zero plus c All right so this gives us minus two e to the minus two minus e to the minus two the constants of integration cancel and then this becomes zero and that becomes one so we get plus one okay so some number that looks like this um, we can write this out and that gives us, you know, minus three, e to the minus two plus one, which is about, or is actually, yeah, it's about 0 0.594. Okay. And so if you think about it, when we did all this out with this integration by parts, this function here showed up down here in our kind of difference of f of t 
So we could have just applied these bounds to my integration by parts formula, right? So we could also apply the bounds in the middle here. Apply the bounds to integration by parts. And by that, I mean, instead of finding out this whole function and then plugging in those bounds at the very end, I could have done it along the way, right? I could have said zero to two of e to the minus t, e to the minus t dt, right? We said that was u times b, right? So we could have done that is t, e to the minus t from zero to two minus integral from zero to two of minus e to the minus t dt, right? When we had this product, uv like that, minus the integral v to u, we could put the bounds here and the bounds there, right? So that brings us to kind of our FTC with integration by parts. Just says that if I have an integral a to b of u dv dt, dt, right, u of t, a to b, Integration by parts combined with FTC here gives us u at t times v at t evaluated from a to b minus the definite integral of a to b of v of t du t dt. Right, so it's the same as the integration by parts formula, but now I have bounds on the integrals. So that instead of indefinite integrals, they're definite integrals. And then this product here is also has these bounds on them, okay? And so that's uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus. So to review, what the fundamental theorem of calculus does is gives us a way to relate indefinite integrals, which solve differential equations by deriving this kind of antiderivative family, to definite integrals, which are these total changes in a function between two discrete points, right? which we saw was the area under this curve f, which we could approximate as these limits of Riemann sum integrals, or Riemann sums, okay? So fundamental theorem of calculus gives us another way to compute a definite integral using the antiderivative from the indefinite integral, okay? And then just evaluating it as the antiderivative at the endpoint minus the antiderivative at the other endpoint. So fb minus fa, or written as b to a like this, which means evaluate it at b and then subtract off it evaluate it at a, okay? And so all this does is measures the change in this quantity little f between points a and b by uh, integrating it up and looking at the difference between the start and the end value of this function f, okay? Cool.